Uh, I've decided uh, not to try to top all of the people uh, who introduced my next guest uh, from time to time in his various appearances of this kind by talking about his great charm and good looks. He's probably sick of that. And uh, anyway, a pretty face is just another pretty face in this business. So will you welcome, please, the very plain-looking and ordinary former star of The Saint and one of the co-stars of uh, a lot of women's favorite series, uh, I'm told, uh, maybe more women than men, I, I wonder. The Persuaders, of course, I mean. Roger Moore. Plain. Well, I thought you must be sick to death of being introduced as a handsome rogue and a... a Continue. A, 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 I, like, I like it already. A, a good-looking dog, a, a, a lady killer. You don't hear that phrase much anymore, but... A dog, I hear quite often, actually. Oh, dog, do you? Yeah. Various forms of, <laughs> of that. Well, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. Yeah, we have that, that no, out we of the way. Yeah. yeah. Say, now, are you depressed? Uh, I didn't... Is your show going off or cancelled or, or something like that? Uh, we, well, we run through the summer. Yeah. And then we go off. And I'm delighted. It's oh, <laughs> a very nice attitude. No, no, because I... Can you explain uh, that? No, because I joined last year the board of Fabergé. And... Uh, the what, what? The board of Fabergé. The you board know? of Fabergé. Fabergé. Oh. And... Uh, Before an accent, I have very hard time. Uh, I would say Faberge, as they say oh, in Australia. Fabergé. No, and... Uh, <laughs> Fabergé is better. Yeah, it is a little nicer there. And uh, we also have a, a film company within Fabergé, Brute Productions. Be our Brute? Brute Productions. Yeah. I, you're lovely. You repeat everything. Is that I didn't realize I was yeah. ringing a cash register somewhere as uh, I do that. And actually, we, we made an announcement. And I'm managing director of the European side of Brute Productions, ah. which um, we are sort of in the picture business in rather a big way. We announced yesterday our plans for this year which in May we're producing a film starring Elizabeth Taylor called Night Watch from oh, the I'm play. Oh, I'm so glad they're making a movie with Elizabeth uh, Taylor. Did you see the... <laughs> <laughs> I've always thought she'd be good in a movie. Well, she needs some money. <laughs> I met her once, if it's the one we were both thinking of, That's and I said, you ought to be in the movies. I made my first picture with her. You did? Yeah, she became a success. I, what happened to me? <laughs> you were in National Velvet? <laughs> no. So that was what? her first, but Lassie Come Home. You know, come on. No, no what, my what? first picture was the last time I saw Paris with, with Elizabeth and Van oh, Johnson. Were you in that? Mm hmm. Who did you play now? I forget. Elizabeth Taylor. No. <laughs> <laughs> and then she took your name uh, and went on to. No, I was, I was a tennis bum. The and tennis I, bum? Yeah. I, my, my first day shooting uh, was with Van Johnson, you know, and I arrived green He's funny. from England. Yeah. Well, a nice man. Yeah. But my, really my first day in the studio, and I had to hit Van Johnson. He was her husband in the film. Yeah. And there's a face from England down there. So it is? Is there a body with it? <laughs> oh, it's a beautiful body with yeah. it. And uh, I had to throw a glass of scotch in Van's face. And you, a newcomer, had to yeah. hit the star with a glass of... He drank it. Yeah. <laughs> Caught it in midair. Yeah. But anyway, we're doing that film, and then we're doing a film with Glenda Jackson and George Siegel called A Touch of Class, which Mel Frank's directing. Gee. Then we're doing uh, another film, which Mel Frank will direct, called Getting Rid of Mr. Straker, which will star myself <laughs> and Lee Remick. That sounds good. And Orson Welles. Do you sell any Thomas. shoelaces or anything? Do you oh, we just sell a lot of fragrance. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but you, does this mean that you're leaving acting? I mean, you don't have to demean yourself anymore? No, but I'm going to act in one of them. We also have three happen. other pictures we didn't announce yesterday because I haven't told George Barry that I'm going to spend all that money for him. But we'll make three other pictures with me as well. You'll be a tycoon if, if half these things are successful. If I live long enough. Is the strain of that more than the strain of acting and punching people and being punched? And Well, I never really work very hard anyway, do I? You know. Yeah, I, I sort of get up and go to the studio and I say the words if I can remember them and go home and count my money. Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. Don't you? Mean, you? you mean Doesn't you're not... everybody? <laughs> no, I'm in it for the pleasure that I bring to shut in people. Uh, oh, that's nice. I thought that's what you were. No, I, no, I, no, I really do it to just keep the country. You know, I sort of count the money. I say one for me and 20 for you and You've one got for a, me and 20 for you. You have a government to support. No, a wife. It's an old Bob Hope line. <laughs> uh, old wife? 
Well, they can be as expensive as a government. Yeah, you're not kidding. Yeah. Do, do you have just one one wife? Uh... At the moment, never more than one at a time. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Some there are a couple along the way. You know. Talking with Roger Moore, who... Did I ask you once if we're about the same age? I mean, you don't need to answer. Uh, we either we part did, of that, and we, we established, after you asked me to leave the show, that you were five years older than I am. Are you putting me on, or, or what? <laughs> no. No, I remember, because you? you were alive during the... Uh, you were alive. You, you, I mean, you remember World War II, and you were yeah. bombed, I remember. Most of the time. <laughs> well, I... <laughs> But you really <laughs> recovered from that. Um, You're a lot younger than I am. Am I really? Mm. Where does it show? On you or me? Oh, uh, uh, no, I think we must be about the same age, because I remember World War II quite clearly. Go on, I'll start. Yeah? How old are you? I, I'm uh, over 30 and less than 40. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm less than 70 and over 30. Oh, well, you are older than I am. <laughs> No, I'm 35. I figure I make you about 38. I'm 44. 44. But I'm honest. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, I see. No, I really am. I'll show you my identification. My, identi uh, Your identity my, my identity. Your uh, identity. You, when you went to school in, in England, yeah. I know, and you have the English education, always when you read about British schools, there's always some sadistic character in there somewhere who either beats the other students or does other unmentionable things or... Yeah, well, uh, you know, uh, yeah, well I was never at uh, a school where there were sadists. There's, there's a reason I won't send my children to boarding school. Seriously? Absolutely. I've never let them go away from home. I uh, went to one school and the Latin master said, in English, not in Latin, mm -hmm. he said, you're a very good-looking boy. And I think you need some extra tuition. And would you stay in after class? Yeah. I wrote home and I said, Dear Mum, please send me my bicycle or my fare because I'm coming home. The, the Latin master was yeah. after you? Mm -hmm. I don't mean he was dark. Oh, <laughs> no, he, he was... He, he talked was, Latin. Yeah. Mm. Well, what, what can you do about that as a kid? I mean, how, did, how did you get out of that? Well, you can either stay at the school and get good marks or you get out of the school. <laughs> <don't you? laughs> Good marks. I yeah. didn't pass in Latin. Well, that's frightening. Were you scared at the time? Uh, no, not really. It, is there something peculiarly English about that? We always hear that the English schools have a way of uh, oh, I, corrupting I, young men. No I, no, I don't think it's confined to England. It goes on everywhere, you know. But there's a... They, you know, there's you a know that in... <laughs> this is a funny story. Uh, in England that uh, homosexuality was just made legal. They passed a the, law. Uh, yeah, what do they Amongst call that? consenting the, adults. As a result of the Wolfenden Report yeah, or something like that? Yeah. which Lord Longford was on the committee. Mm -hmm. And there was a man who immigrated to Australia. And they said, why have you come? And he said, well, he said, they made it legal in England and I'm leaving before they make it compulsory. <laughs> <laughs> it's very funny. Oh, there's two of them out there. <laughs> two Englishmen here. No, two Australians. Oh, Australia. <laughs> Uh, I was going to ask you about... Oh, you, I also know that you were a policeman's son. Yes. Was this rough? No, it was great. I mean, the other kids were kind of... Uh, no, if anybody picked on me, I'd rush home and I'd get my father's helmet out of the wardrobe. Yeah. And I would stick it on my head and just put my head over the windowsill and frighten the life out of the other kids, you know. They thought Dad was home. They thought that he had come after them? Yeah. 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 But I, my, I... Actually, my father, although he was in the police, I think I saw him in uniform once. Mm -hmm. He was what is called a plan drawer. I don't know what that is. Well, if there's an accident, somebody draws up where the accident was or the scene of the crime, they draw oh, yeah. up the room and the dimensions. So he worked at home. Mm -hmm. And my father's a great athlete and a swimmer. He would uh, take me out in the summer, he'd take me swimming all day, and he would do his plan drawing at night. Yeah. So I never saw my father work as a kid. And so I'd be asked what I was going to do. I'd say, well, I'm going to be a policeman like my father. I'm not going to work. <laughs> and it, it, did he see to it that you were very law-abiding? Uh, what if you had been caught stealing something and it would have been a scandal? Um, wouldn't be a scandal, but he would have knocked my head off. No, I yeah. think he brought me up with a great respect for the law. Yeah. That's it, not the reason I play all these people who break the law. That's what I was wondering. I wonder if you... Um, 
and some Freudian would say that you are actually getting back at your father, even though you pretend to like him, you don't because you've assumed the role in later life of lawbreaker. No, actually, I, I, at one point in my life, I wanted to join the police. I have, I have a tremendous respect for law and order. You know, I'm not one of these people that call them the fuzz or anything. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a, I think we need them. Well, isn't, don't you have a whole different attitude toward police in England than you do here for some reason? They're, they're, they're very different characters well, there. Well, police in England, you know, not armed. Yeah. That always alarms that me. That seems to make a, a whole gun on his hip. difference. In also, also like, uh, a friend of mine, Kenny Moore, was doing an interview, I, th I think for an American network, mm -hmm. with the chief of police in London, with the commissioner of police, and they were discussing riot control. And the reason uh, that the English don't need arms is that they have what they call face-to-face -face control of a rioter, rioting, you know, mobs. Yeah. They will never let a gap be come between the police line and the people, because if there's a gap, people can shoot or throw things. If they're face-to-face, -face, uh -huh. only the front line can kick, you know, which is rather nasty. Yes. But anybody throwing things from the back are going to hit their friends in the front. So there is always a control. So as soon as there's a mob, you rush right up to meet them before face to face and close you, the distance. You should meet trouble head on. Yeah. yeah. And this works. Mm -hmm. Can you do the various violent things that you do? I mean, would you, be a, would you have the edge over um, the average person now if you were uh, approached by a mugger or something because of all of the things yes. you had to learn? To oh, definitely. I can run faster than he can. <laughs>